super full meeting. And right now I want our club growth director, Tim Spear, to present our meeting. Welcome, Tim Spear. Thank you, Olga. Yeah, I'm very, very happy that so many people are attending this workshop today. It means that, well, you are well prepared. You know there's something coming up and you want to prepare yourself even more by attending this workshop. And it's great that we have two very experienced Toastmasters facilitating this workshop, giving you advice from their experience as club members, as speech contest uh, members, as division directors, <laughs> former division directors. And so I'm very, very convinced that you will take a lot from this workshop today. As I already said, you are preparing. The workshop will most likely take place on club level in your clubs on January or February. But if you start now, you will be prepared well. And this will be not as much stressful as it might be without being prepared. It's still a challenge. And I'm glad that so many clubs are willing to take on this challenge. Not only as... Now I lack again the word somehow. <laughs> As attendees in the in the workshop uh, in the in the workshop in the in the contest, you are challenged, but also when you are preparing the contest, when you are the contest chair or the chief judge, this is an interesting experience, and it will give you quite some additional challenge when you figure out, okay, there's something missing. There might be missing a document. There might be missing a sheet. There might be missing the input from some of the judges. And if you are well prepared, then it's only one or two things which are missing and give you a little bit of stress. So you are happy afterwards that you manage to go through this and have a really, really successful speech contest in the end. But Olga and Manuel might also mention during this, but what is also my experience Use, use the material you have from Toastmasters. Use these official sheets because else you might miss out on something. And this is something that can be really, really painful if you had a successful speech contest, but in the end, somehow it is missing who had won which place, who had won uh, which trophy, and who will go on to the next level or might replace the one who has suddenly gotten sick and cannot take his part on the next level. So really, really pay attention, look for the material that is there and available. And most of all, enjoy the experience you have. As Ralph Smedley said, we learn most in moments of enjoyment. And so I wish you lots of joy and fun during this workshop in, in your upcoming speech contests. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. And right now I am introducing our PQD program policy director, Jabba, who will say some words before we dive in into our workshop. Thank you very much, Olga. Well, welcome from my side as well to everybody. I'm so glad you made it. I was asked to talk a little bit about why are we here today or even why are we having contests at all? Do you remember the first time you joined your club meeting as a guest? You may or may not. Well, I do. It was after a long working day. I traveled to this location in Hamburg where I joined a club meeting and it was a vibrant, fantastic meeting with a lot of, lot of great speeches. It was welcoming and professional in the same time. I had a really overwhelming, positively overwhelming experience, which made me wish to come back. And after the second time, made me wish to join this. I wanted this. And I'm pretty sure you had the same experience or very similar because you are all members here. And you have been um, selecting your paths and going on with the learning. So first thing you do is to engage with the learning, select a path, and do your projects, your 
uh, roles on the meetings as well. But there is a lot more to learning in Toastmasters than just that. You get a lot, a lot of feedback. You hopefully have access to mentoring support. You get trainings and workshops such as this one today with a lot of well-prepared content, what Manuel and Olga has brought to us today. But the ultimate key is beyond all this to the Toastmasters learning experience is to continuously challenge yourself. There's no better way than being on a contest, competing or even organizing one. This time, next May or next uh, early year, we are going to have six contests in our district in two languages. So the prepared speeches, evaluations, and the table topics as well in both German and English. And you will have a chance to attend, organize, judge, or do any other role on these meetings at club, area, division, district level, or even beyond. The official contest will be all in person, as has been decided by the district, including the area directors and division directors, but there will be an additional online as well, which will be less um, firm, but, the, uh, but we wish to always follow the contest rules that is very important that at each and every level, we adhere to those. The guidance to that is the contest rule book, which is renewed every single year. And there are some news like eligibility. And every single year, like this year, the level two completed for both German and English um, prepared speeches is a requirement and also to be in good standing as always. Unless you have a DTM from the previous program, then you uh, don't have an additional level two requirement. But that and a lot of other things are uh, relayed in the rule book, um, captured in the rule book, and that will be your ultimate guidance if you either want to compete, like Cyril on the uh, picture here, or you want to organize one at any level in this um, constant season. The Questions which are always repeating themselves are about eligibility, which I just mentioned a few details about it. What are the certain roles, how to get there, how to do them best? What are the rules related to those roles or the flow of the contest? And how to do it best? You will get some hints, tips and tricks and very specific advices during this workshop today. And all in all, the purpose is that it helps you prepare, either you are an organizer or you are a contestant, to have and to provide an ultimate outstanding contest experience. So without further ado, I wish you a fantastic learning, a lot of interactive positive experience in this workshop and wish to give the word back to our workshop facilitator, Orga. Thank you very much, Java. A warm round of applause and we are starting our workshops. Yeah, so the first slide I would like to show is this one and I will invite Manuel to Talk a little bit, what is it about? Thank you, Olga. So in the, this first section of our workshop, we will get our hands dirty. So I will present you with a timeline of the actual contest. And this is the first step to yeah, engage with the content. Um, so you might be a little bit surprised that it's so practical right now, uh, but in the next section, we will go over to a metaphor of turtles and elephants. This should prepare you for that. So, so right now, we are exploring things a little bit.
bit from the practical side. And on the screen, you see, see a chessboard. So of course, there are many important roles involved within a contest. And you can think of it as, as a chessboard. Yeah, you will throughout this workshop, you will encounter on uh, many times this uh, chessboard or chess piece metaf metaphor, and we want to use it. So there are, uh, yeah, several roles involved, as I said. And uh, Olga, I suggest to stop the screen sharing and to get the feeling. Yeah, what roles and most importantly, which timelines are there to be uh, to be honored? I want to present you with a digital whiteboard. So I will now post in the chat room a digital whiteboard. Uh, just a moment. So. With this link, you can access the whiteboard. And I would like to divide you into six groups, oh, sorry, uh, five groups, um, and work in teams. Yeah. Uh, team number one will be like the, the time section four weeks before the contest. Yeah. So I know some of you will do the role for the first time. But some of you will do the role re repeated time and maybe just write something down. Yeah, it does not have to be perfect, just write something down, tasks and duties, and ideally when they should happen. Um, so you will get assigned a number, yeah, you will assign a team. And oh. so um we will now starting the breakout rooms. I, I just want you to write, yeah. Um, just be, don't be uh, too perfect, yeah. I just want to get you going. And as I said, this is a preparation for the next section, which will be hosted by Olga. And in about five minutes, we will com conclude this uh, work period and look at the results a little bit and compare notes. Okay. Um, yeah. Everybody goes in the breakout session. Yes, we I will give me some time. Give me, mm -hmm. give and me some once time, again, the task, you will see several periods of time. Just write in these squares, different colors, what you think in this period of time should be done. Yeah, I will be starting the sessions now and I will give us like five minutes, yeah? Don't be pressured to be super perfect. As I said, just write something down. You can use the tools and if you have questions, you can come back to, the, to this main room and ask questions. And don't panic. We we can. I will join every of the group, and we'll explain it again if something is not clear. We going? Yep. Mm, just a second. Mm -hmm. Need to do some settings. Okay, let's go. So all of you <laughs> who are remaining here, yeah, don't be surprised. Yeah. Um, I wanted to hear you, so I keep wanted to keep you here in the main room. You can because it will be not fear if you join any of the room. I will go through the rooms and uh, see what are they doing. Okay. Should we also move around the rooms or let us all do it then? 
we wait for the results. Yeah, feel free. Yeah. Um, so it should be. Oh, yeah. I will check on. Alexandra has Florian. not joined her room yet. Yeah, maybe she's away from the screen. Hello. Hi, Alex. Hi, here's Java. I'm not sure what's happening again with the video. It worked yesterday and it's gone now. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix it. Hi. Uh, it would be helpful if we have the screen sharing. Uh, okay. Yeah. Manuel, can you? Uh, okay. I think Manuel is currently on his. I think it should be fine now. Uh, let me quickly. Yes, I can. I can do that now. Perfect. I will go back to my room mm -hmm. three. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So Alex doesn't have a room. Alex, I will assign you to room five because they have only four people there. They will tell you what is the exercise. I'm host. You were much better prepared than me, Java. Was I? Okay. <laughs> Didn't feel so. You even had slides. <laughs> yeah, two of them. Oh, the, the worksheet has gone for me. Oh, uh, I can see it. Great. A lot of people are going around. Like, uh, ah, okay. Me. So I can see it again. Just had to reload. On the day of the day and hope for the best. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so tired yesterday. <laughs> I didn't do anything or nothing useful, let's say that way. Hi, Alexandra. Um, if you are with us, you're welcome to join your room. Or is it not as, are you not assigned to your room? Let, let us take care. Uh, I was assigned, but it does not um, work. It was just loading, loading, room five, room five, X, X is room five. So I thought maybe I die in again because I was not connected to the breakout room. Ah, okay, okay. Then we can give you, I, I will leave it to Manuel, which room it gives it to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah, a little bit. Uh on the timing yeah we have like 20 seconds left so it's just uh yeah, just a small exercise to get things started to warm up yeah and i see now there's some software errors so a lot of people cannot access the page yeah i up Competent weasel. <laughs> really, really nice. You want to bring them back already? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. So
We don't have much time. The, the, the rooms will be closed very soon. But I hope that we will see right now everything. And everybody all coming back. Hi. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you for doing this small exercise. Yeah. It uh, should give you a feeling of what tasks are there overall. Yeah. And it is important that we do them on time. So later you will get to know the classical roles in the contest, like chief judge and contest chair. And they, are, of course, have their specific duties. Uh, but here I wanted to give you an overview of what should be done and I get a feeling for the size of the task. So although it is a challenging experience, but it's also a very rewarding experience. And it's important that you do good time planning, yeah? Who does what, when? And distribute the tasks and build the teams. And so I have to say a big sorry to the software. Yeah, somehow the software crashed all the time with me. I try to share my screen now, so you will you can see. So now you should see something. <laughs> so let's look at the time slot four weeks before. So there should be some kind of a marketing plan. Oh, you are already thinking big. So. Um, if you are on area level and division level, yeah, you should definitely do some marketing beforehand. Of course, if you are on a club level, so it will be naturally given to you. You can promote it to your all your club members and they will be yeah, looking forward to be able to join and to participate. And yeah, just take your time like four weeks or even before that to make proper announcements that there will be upcoming contest. I would say date for the meeting is a little bit, uh, for the contest is a little bit too late already, four weeks before. Uh, I am also of the same opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, okay, we have not, uh, so you can even prepend a, a section, yeah, like five, six, seven, eight weeks before, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I also three, three like to before. confirm venue before. That is really great. So congratulations to those who said it. Indeed, one. Uh, it should be really early. I have questions. Yes. What is a feasible due date for the like uh, notification on the planned event? So should it be like January of the? contest is planned for May or what is best? Yeah, I will show you. It. Uh, okay, we have to look at the time planning. So um, one second. I will now show you it's a different slide. So you can see, see this progression. Okay. Mm -hmm. So club contest should also be from my uh, side. Um, I suggest to do it in January, at the latest in February uh, for the club contest. For the area contest, I suggest March. Yeah, maybe uh, Jabba and Tim can say something if it's correct. And for the division contest uh, in April. And we already know the date of the district contest. It will be May 10. And from that, you can calculate backwards. Yeah. So of course you need to give the speakers some time to prepare so if they have been a winner in the club contest they should have some time to give them some time to prepare properly for the area contest so there should be like uh, two three four weeks in between yeah so they can have proper preparation so right now it is november but I will encourage you to think about the date of your contest already now, if you have not agreed it before, because the sooner you have it, the, the better you will organize your contest. 
Thank you. And in the, if I may, um, um, the, yeah. um, the earlier the better to inform the members or the potential contestants. And as Manuel mentioned, it's a backwards planning. So you know when is the district conference is going to be 10 to 12 of May. You want to make sure that the succession is uh, is smoothly happening from div area to division and division to district level. So the division level should be good time in advance. April is preferred or should be in April and the area contest in March. And basically from there onwards, you can plan the um, club contests. So when the area contest is set, if it's not set yet, please uh, contact the area director and check when they would like to have that because you don't want to have the club contest too late, like a day or two before, but you want to make sure that your members at club level as well have enough time to prepare for the next level. And it's always good to plan it a little bit later than too early within like within the year. So many of the clubs, in my experience, prefer February because then the new members can also achieve the eligibility level potentially what is required for the contest or can be more experience that helps them on the contest. So you might have them more people if you don't put it the first days of January, but maybe wait until then. But it's up to the club. What I also would encourage you is to agree uh, with your neighbor clubs the date of your contest, because you would probably like to invite somebody from the neighbor clubs as judges or even facilitators. I don't know, but networking and inviting people to the clubs is always a benefit. That leads me to my next question, if I may. Sorry. Sure. Um, how many judges are necessary to run a, a club contest? Yeah, um, it depends on which, how many are present actually, yeah. I know for some clubs it will be quite difficult to get the required number of judges. So maybe they, they can only um, present to you with three judges or five, then it is um, still possible to do it. Um, and also you can invite people from other, from the neighboring clubs, for example, to get to the required number. Yeah? So um, also you can spend some time to educate judges to do some judge training. So some people will be judged for the first time and theoretically, uh, you can, everybody can be a judge, yeah, but, uh, but you need some time for training, of course. And for that, you can do a special uh, club session before of that, beforehand, to promote being a judge, yeah, show them how to fill out the forms. Toastmaster has uh, um, prepared material for that, so you need not do it yourself. Uh, later, I will post a link. And yeah, I think the number is three. So just to, to answer directly to your question, uh, Olga. If I may interfere, sorry. Uh, even if you have three judges, one of them should be a tiebreaker. So two judges and a tiebreaker. Minimum judges. Okay, back to you, Manuel. Yeah, and ideally you would have even more yeah, so it is also a feeling of fairness. So if you have, if you are a chief judge and you have like 17 judges, so you can feel yourself, you have done a good job, you have done a fair evaluation. And, but uh, this number is of course a little bit imaginary. Um, yeah, try to have at minimum three, but for the different levels, actually, there's a, a dedicated number. So I think it's, yeah, Ivan, Ivan, please. Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly, it is six plus one, six judges and one tie-breaking judge. Uh, uh, but does that apply only for area and above and not for the club? 
it's for area and above. For division, okay. it's better to have more, but also don't overcharge yourself. Just imagine if you have 17 judges, as Emmanuel just said, how much time your chief judge and ballot counts will spend to count all this quantity. Just, yeah, not that much, but not that few. So for a club, there is no minimum number or something? Minimum is three. Okay. Three, one tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. Got it. All, all of this is just a uh, warm up session, yeah, uh, to give a perfect segue to the next section of Olga. Yeah, and just to get a feeling for the size of the task. Olga, please. With this uh, screen, with this picture, we wanted to inspire you to create a real organizing team for your professional contest. If you look at this picture, there are three elephants. And with these three elephants, we mean contest organizer, chief judge, and contest chair. I would also encourage you to, to think about them in this way. If somebody does not do his responsibility, he's becoming smaller elephant. And all this contest, what is based above this three elephant is now on, on the backs of two elephants. Or if somebody of these three takes too much responsibility and grows like that, he also takes on his shoulders too much and keeps all the responsibility on his shoulders. Why we are doing uh, that, why I want to show you this picture and I, why I want you to remember it, is that to tell you that contest organizer, chief judge and contest chair are three elephants of your contest. Don't give too much responsibility to one of them and don't take too much responsibility from one of them. Just share it wisely and think about each of these elephants as a big part of your team. Later on, we will discuss each of these roles. Unfortunately, we do not have time to, to speak about more roles. Let's concentrate on this main one. I have a question to the audience. What do you think? What is this turtle about? What is this water about? As I said, these three elephants, we know what it is. This, uh, ground here, yeah, this mountain above, this is our contest. And what is this water? What is this turtle? Are there any associations? The rule book. The rule book is what? <laughs> turtle or water? Turtle. And the turtle. <laughs> the turtle. Anybody else? The Toastmasters. The Toastmasters is water or turtle? <laughs> Well, uh, the Toastmasters members, maybe of the club, uh, is the turtle, and the Toastmasters are the water. Good, really. I nice. think so too. Yeah. Thorsten, your ideas. I saw you open your microphone. No, actually, I, I would uh, say the same as my previous speakers, colleagues. Okay, then we are going to the role of the contest chair. And I'm giving the screen to Manuel. Oh, chief judge, sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah. So this is chief judge and <laughs> this beautiful image, yeah, sums it up quite nicely. Uh, so, of course, the books in the background is the rule book and uh, the yeah, fam famous Hammer, yeah, where he does his judging and kind of uh, wizard's hat, yeah. He must uh, be 
well, well versed in the rule book and all the requirements. And um, there's things uh, he should do and things which he should not do. So his, I should um, stop it. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one moment of silence. He defines the primary, he defines the yeah, uh, integrity and the fairness of the contest. He is has key responsibilities in selecting the judges, briefing them on the contest rules and overseeing the judging process. And yeah, some more. And for that next section, for this, I want to present you with another whiteboard, and I hope it works now. Uh, were you showing something? Because I didn't see it. No, no, no. It was like uh, Manuel has to find the link and put it okay. in the chat. Okay. This is Sorry. these are not the whiteboards of Zoom. These are other whiteboards. Yes. I will post the link in the chat room. So you should be able to access this by opening the chat room and clicking on the link. And now, Again, there is a task description on the upper side, yeah, on the top. So there is your assignment. And I want you to write down some tasks of the chief judge. Again, you do not have to be perfect. Um, just write what you're thinking. And now I would like to, I want you to sort them by relevance, importance, yeah, importance and time flexibility. So some tasks are really important to make them on time and sometimes some tasks are really important, but some tasks are really not important. And uh, for that, I again will divide you into groups and we will see on the whiteboard, there's six um, oh, sections which you can go to. And I would like to go uh, direct you to the uh, correct group number. Mm -hmm. So let me see. Ja, mal schauen, ob das funktioniert. <lacht> Schiebst du mich noch irgendwo rein, Manuel? Das sollte schon geschehen sein, aber gut, dann schaue ich mal, was ich tun kann. Es geht sowieso nicht bei mir, dieses, dieses Whiteboard, da kommt eine Fehlermeldung. Ich habe sie dir in den WhatsApp geschrieben. War, war vorhin auch so, ich bin dann komplett rausgefallen. Ja, ich kriege auch eine Fehlermeldung, also ganz oft. Also dann muss ich Reload drücken und dann geht es wieder ein paar Sekunden und dann geht es wieder nicht mehr. Das habe ich total nicht erwartet, wenn es mal drauf ankommt. Tja. Next time we will take a little bit more time because yes, some uh, yes, uh, have difficulties to 
to start working? Yeah, so this whiteboard solution I've chosen it doesn't work so well. I am deeply sorry for that. So I will quickly share um, my screen so we can go over something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's look at uh, group number one. Yeah. Let's pick out some tasks. So with this exercise, I wanted to show you uh, a sorting of the tasks of the chief judge. Yeah? For example, I've put meeting with best, meeting with guilt should be something which chief judge should not do, okay? You have to develop a feeling of task you should do and task you should not do. Uh, you need not be engaging with the guests, okay? <laughs> Your primary group of interest is the judges and the judges team, tiebreaker judges, and other contest officials. And later, yeah, on in the end of the contest, you have to deliver the list of the winners to the contest chair of the next contest. And what we have here, um, of course, your very important duty is conducting the judge briefing before the contest. And for that one, you should prepare a slide set of slides. Um, you can take the official ones from the Toastmasters International website. I will post you a link to that one. And also one of your tasks is uh, appointing of the voting judges, the bell counters, timers, and timing judges, and collecting the time record sheet and of supervising the judging process uh, when there is the time. Um, so, we search it. Okay. So in the chat room, I have now posted you links to the rule book of the official Toastmasters. Of course, this should be your yeah, source of reading yeah, for the next days, wind weeks. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, your, yeah, your choice of book before sleep. <laughs> but uh, more importantly is the second link. In the second link, you will find uh, contest tutorials from the official uh, professional side. It's much more cleaner yeah, than we have shown uh, that you can see here on screen. Yeah, There you can see professional, clean, and well explained everything. So you do not have to create your material. Yeah, It's very important that you do not overwork yourself in creating these materials. You can use already what's there yeah? and use it for your, for example, use this material while you are doing the uh, uh, um, that briefing and then it will be a lighter load for you. Okay. In the interest of time, I like to give over to Olga for the next session. Are you fine with that, Olga? Yes, I am here. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and here I want to show you another picture. This is about contest chair. Contest chair is very popular role among Toastmasters, and I'm sure you will find a lot of people volunteering for this role. However, this is good, yes, but it's a little bit dangerous because contest chair has its his own role and he should follow it. As you see, what I try to say with this picture is contest chair regulating the whole contest. He says everybody where to go. Like, okay, right now we have this contest, we have these contestants, every contestant has this time, this is my first contestant, contestant. this is what his name, his title, again title and name. This is a strict procedure and contest chairs should not get a part of it. On the other hand, 
Contest chair is a part of the team, as you saw in the in our first slide with elephant and turtle. Please don't forget it. Contest chair represent your team. This is a face of your team. That's why he should act strictly according to the rules and don't do extra movement. My plan is to send you to the breakout sessions and ask you to think about what the contest chair should not do. I also have a set of tasks for contest chair and I want you to separate them among the fields. What contest chair should not do at all, just no go. What contest chair should probably consider doing? What contest chair should just think about? Probably could be good. And what are the contest chair responsibility? Right now, I have uh, different five different colors for each group. So let's say. A pink is for first group, okay? First group. Would it be okay with pink? Blue is for second group. Yellow for third group. Violet for fourth group. And fifth group is green. You have only three do or not do task for contest cheer. And you have five minutes. So I hope the task is clear. Are there any questions? Okay, once again in breakout ses session and you remember your color, right? Let's go ahead. Uh, I think you can stop the speed sharing now. Can you and also stop the sharing? Yeah, I think Olga is not here at the moment. But well, we can click on this. Yes. <laughs> Where has she gone? I think she is wandering around the rooms, probably from another account. Or ah, there. Yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. 
You're right. Unfortunately, we have to leave with Tim in the next five minutes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Super. Yeah, and thank you for doing this for us. Mm -hmm. Really great. Yeah, let's see. Markus Bonsieben will be coming in the next few minutes. Markus Bonsieben is another uh, facilitator, but he has to work until like uh, 8 p.m. I hope he will be coming. Yeah, let's hope. Okay. Yeah, make sure you have enough time for questions and answers at the end. It's, it's, mm. it's always really good that they can reflect on mm. whatever is on their mind. Yeah, we are in time and, and uh, we reserved uh, 10 minutes in the end for Q&A. And we will also give them a handout and I will read, I want to direct them to the website. So on the website, I will create this handout and um, it will grow, yeah? So you guys can link to it and hopefully we will gather uh, all required material over there, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, if uh, you feel the benefit, then you could create a um, kind of like a WhatsApp chat group for contests, and everybody could just pitch closer the time their queries, questions, and and then everybody can benefit from the answer. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that was good. And was it? If you also add us to uh, add us to it, like the three, trio or the core team, then uh, we can also clarify every 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 query and help them, same as in the other groups. Mm -hmm. We do. Thank you. Everything is going smoothly. Fantastic. Great. Then we wish you a fantastic continuation of the workshop. We need to leave to another meeting at eight o'clock. Um, so everybody is coming back. Yeah. Yay. So we will be saying goodbye to Jabba and Tim. Thanks yeah. for being here. Thank you for having Perfect. us <laughs> and keep having a fantastic experience and don't forget to ask your questions at the end and follow up with your peers. Enjoy. Bye. Okay. So we are ready with the white boat. Uh, Manuel, can you please share the, the white boat, your screen? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Great. Wow, so colorful. Great, great, obligatory, but you know what? I have right now an idea. You had uh, not very many uh, cards to distribute. Can anybody take, can anybody from the groups take one of the cards and say why exactly this and in this field? Who would like to do this? Only one card from three or four. Who would like to do that? Okay, I see Florian opened his his microphone. Please. Yeah, I can do for the it's in the upper left. Mm -hmm. Think of a question for the table topic contest. Yeah. Uh, we say this is. Uh, it's not for the one who is organizing everything. It has to be organized by somebody else. And even to organize a fallback, if somehow the, the first one who organized the question is missing, whatever. OK. Um, so it's no go to think about them, to do the questions. No go to think. Think of a question for the table topic. Well, actually, in a rule book, the rule book says that yes, it is the contest chair who does it. But 
it's a good practice to think about it together with the team. Why? Because the question could be used already, or somebody could hear about it, or the question is not really for the contest. That's why better ask your contest organizer and chief judge and chief, contest, uh, contest chair together to think about two possible questions. Why two possible questions? Does, can, does anybody have an idea? Why two possible uh, questions for the contest, uh, for the table topic? Yes. Why? Because uh, sometimes there are people that got aware of the topic, so they have to change for another topic. Otherwise, they know the answer to the question. So you always should have something in your pocket. Alex, if you have a hand up, did you have some something to say? Yes, I wanted to say about the findings that test speaker do not forget. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, this is very important. Otherwise, you can cancel your evaluation contest. Yes, that's great. Um, I have Mati uh, somebody else. Okay, Leona, Leona. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So don't you need to have the same question for all the table topic participants? That's true. Normally, yes, you have only one question for the table topic participants. But in many cases, it happens that you need another one. Okay. It could have something happened during the during the speech, but the speaker is still eligible. But it would not be that fair if he re replies the same the same question twice. So just think about an additional question. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other uh, volunteers to speak? I would. Uh, here I would ask here who was with give speeches on the stage. What do you think? Can a chief chair, a contest chair give speeches on the stage during the contest? Is it not obligatory but or no go? Alex a no-go because it's not the job of the contest chair to hold a speech. <laughs> yes, exactly. Here we have also Lila announce the judges. Can a contest chair announce a judges from the stage? I am a contest chair. I am coming to the contest and say, okay, we have 10 judges and their name was this, this, and this. Ruth? No. No. No, it's absolutely no, no, no. no. Nobody should know the names of the judges. Right. Like they, they remain secret uh, even after the contest, as far as I know. Okay. Um, entertain the audience during the minute for judges. Any idea? There is a minute of silence when judges are filling in their ballots. And uh, I would like to entertain the audience. Would it be possible? Yeah, but it, it should be silence and not entertainment. Great. Great. Can a uh, contest here submit a protest? Blue group. What is your idea? Can I, can I as a contest chair, submit a uh, protest? Oh, Alex? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think okay. I think anybody can um, yes uh, protest, but then it's the, up to the chief judge and the judges panel to decide uh, if this is justified. Mm -hmm. No, yes. no, Leona, please. Only the contestants and uh, uh, judges. 
oh. judges can can raise uh, complaints. Okay. Should a contest chair participate in debates about the protest? Let's imagine the one of the contestants says, "Okay, this is not uh, this is not a speech which is original. This is not an original speech." And the judges discuss whether they should disqualify the contestant or not. Should the contest chair participate in this discussion? No. No. I see somebody put struggle with the audience on the top of no go. I respect this group. Any ideas, any comments on it? This is absolutely right. No go, struggling with the audience. You should regulate the audience. If the audience wants to talk with you, you should listen attentively and not stop talking, not, uh, not prevent them from talking. Okay, that was contest chair. Any questions about this role? Any questions? What we have not embraced with this table? Yes, Florian. Uh, yeah, when, when choosing someone to do it, is it like, uh, can it be like someone who's new in the club or you know, is there some experience? I would not recommend. Better, but when there's somebody who's new in the club, say I'm here since quarter of a year and want to do this then okay go for it or is the i would not recommend to take a new person i would really advise you to take somebody who is experienced who already go, uh, has gone through the experience of participating in the contest because the contest chair is a person who brings the contestants on the stage the contestants are nervous the contestants are afraid. They are very close to nervous break. That's why the contest chair should be their last hope. That's why it is really important that the contest chair follows the whole ritual. Handshake, obligatory. Smile, obligatory. Correctly pronounce the name. The name should be pronounced correctly. This is very, uh, very important. And everybody who passed the exam and he heard his name pronounced incorrectly knows that even your name could be a reason that you fail at your exam. The same with the contestant. Contestant should be presented correctly. The title of a speech presented correctly. Judges should uh, should judge the contestant and not the contest chair. That's why the contest chair should be really experienced person. If not, we had an experienced uh, contest chair last year in Division D um, at the evaluation contest, and he had a mentor, a very good mentor, who discussed with him why this gesture why this procedure and not this procedure that's why when choosing your contest chair please try to be responsible to the contestants because the contest chair is about contestants it's not about himself this is not that he is presenting something there on the stage he is not there for him he is there for contestants Any other questions? Who is uh, presenting the awards? Is it a contest chair or is it a chief judge? I believe it's a chief judge, if I remember correctly. Any other ideas? I think it's the contest chair. Yeah. Both variants are possible. 
both variants are possible, but the contest chair and chief judge should uh, discuss it beforehand and better with the contest organizer, because contest organizer could decide what is here more reasonable, if the contest chair is presenting the awards or the chief judge. Okay, Alex, is it your question or? Yes, I, I, I had another, uh, yes, another possibility would be the master of ceremony presenting the awards. That's also possible. And that is also really nice when, uh, when you have a ceremony master at division level, it is easier than at, at club level. Yeah, but please, please. Discuss it beforehand in your team and your contest chair should be aware how to work, how to work with it. Yeah, I think contest chair is done. One question, uh, how would the contest chair check the eligibility of the contestants? Would that be uh, like a confirmation from the VPE or how, how, how would that happen? Uh, normally, it happens in the following way. The chief judge, so are you asking about club level or area level? Club. Club, club level. Because club if level. it is, quali if someone is eligible at club level, that would uh, carry the same, right? This is, in, at club level, this is the task for VP Ed. Yep. He should check the rules, the uh, book, the rule books of the contestants of the contest and uh, please check the easy speak normally the information is always there but it should also mm -hmm. be checked with the treasurer that the member had paid has paid good point good point so sorry i forgot about it member should have paid of course, yeah. Uh, you uh, you mean pathways, right? Not uh, you mean in base camp, not in easy speak. In base camp, mm -hmm. yes. If uh, if your yeah. VPA does not yep. do it in easy speak, yes, it's of course complicated. But in base camp, of course, you can always see it. They should reflect each other, but they don't always do. But the, VPE, but the VPE should know. That's true. Any other questions? Yeah, I would also like to mention that uh, contest chairs should be respected within the, clo the club or with the area because, you know, it's sometimes it's difficult to regulate the audience because the audience try to, to walk around, to do things. Yeah, contest chair regulates it. If he should or she should get the audience to be calm, to, to listen to the contestants. That's why, well, of course it's possible to, to bring a new person and it's nice to bring in new people, but yeah, think about what is more reasonable in your, in your situation. We are done with contest chair. Super, thank you, Olga. Ah, Ruth, uh, we will have a question and answer section at the end of the workshop, okay? Can we wait until then? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, at the moment, I would like to hand over to Markus Bonsiepen. He will be uh, showing us something about the award ceremony. And thank you for being here after a long day of work. Finally, you arrived. Thank you, Marcus. So please, um, I will support you with the whiteboard link. And yeah, I welcome you on stage. Many thanks, Manuel, and hello to everyone from my side. My name is Marcus Bonsieben, and in the next about 10 minutes, I will give you some insights about the award ceremony and the according paperwork, which is which has to be done um, in advance to the award ceremony. First of all, I would like to, to share my screen in order to show you a very common mistake which can happen and 
which has already happened several times in Qantas, that's something you have to be very careful if you are preparing the award ceremony. You see here on the top of my slide, a section which is part of the so-called counters tally sheet. The counters tally sheet is, is the form which uses which is used by the ballot counters. And after the ballot counters have counted the ballots, they come to a final result from their point of view. Someone is first, someone is second, and someone is third. And then they give this section to the chief judge. The chief judge receives now a result, which starts with one, two, and then third place. And now this person, the chief judge, has another form, which is called results form. And the chief judge, for example, he has to check then if there are time disqualifications or whatever has happened, a reason for disqualification. And then the chief judge fills out the results form. And now you see the results form here it starts with the third place, then second, and then first. And what can happen now very easily is that the chief judge takes one, two, three and fills in the names, names here, which leads to the result that then the order is swapped. Yeah, you see here it's one, two, three, here it's three, two, one. So be very careful. And if you are chief judge, judge in the contest and you are preparing for the award ceremony, then have a small chat with the contest chair, for example, if the, I assume no, mostly the contest chair presents the awards, and then discuss that with the contest chair, inform him again about that it's three, two, one. And the reason why this is on the results form is because in, in Toastmasters, according to the rule book, the awards are presented beginning with the third place, then second, and then first. This is precisely mentioned in the rule book. So this is a very common mistake, which is, is done that the order is mixed up. And this can have then yeah, very severe consequences because if everything is then finalized, the awards have been presented, the contest is over, then the results are final. So you cannot, after everything is has been finished, you cannot give someone a call the next morning and say, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, we unfortunately have forgotten that it was a different order or something like that. So this is something which is, have, have please be very careful with this point. Then I would like to, that we head over to the whiteboard. We have um, a whiteboard and you know this is what we are doing here is called a workshop and i know that several of you have already been part of a contest and have also seen the award ceremony so i can imagine that many of you have already seen hopefully some excellent award ceremonies and maybe some of you have already seen some some examples for for parts which could have um, been done better I don't know, can everyone see the, the whiteboard now? If you click on the link, there is a link in the chat now and that should lead you to the whiteboard. At least I, I clicked on the link and I can not see, I can see only some forms which are moving. There are three forms which, which are moving. I don't know if that's only the case on my screen or... I can offer to share my screen. I see about 10 mouse cursors, so... So, Markus, if you want to give directions. Okay, good. Yeah, you see point, point one is now read the forms carefully, take especially care of the order. That was what I have just presented to you. Now, please take, yeah, or remember what have been outstanding award ceremonies where you have 
participated in a contest. I have uh, some things in mind, but I would propose that you first start and then we can write down a list here, very positive examples. What were elements of an outstanding award ceremony for you? And we can write it down and can create a joint list which can be circulated after our workshop and then you have um, a guidance for that. Can I start? Yeah, please. Um, I remember there was a ceremony when all the names, all the winner names were doubled on the screen. That was a hybrid meeting, of course, but I think it's a good practice not only to announce the winners, mm -hmm. but also show their names on screens. Okay. Can can you uh, write, Manuel, or...? Yes, of, co of course, I can write it down. So, okay. uh, not only announce verbally, yeah, but also show in writing. Mm Maybe you, you can add names of the contestants, then it's uh, more clear. Then uh, what about the music, for example? Has anyone here in the room ever been part of a ceremony with music? Yes, there was once uh, we, we did with music. We had a professional DJ at at our contest, and he was like switching on some music, and that was so funny. Actually, <laughs> music was. Right. Uh, I but also I, think I, music I think can... participants are writing also on on the whiteboard. Look, uh, there is engage the audience with a drum roll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think music, even mostly you don't have a professional DJ, but even if you have just a music box, you can then connect your mobile with the, with the music box and then you can play some, some pieces. This can create a great atmosphere of, of a professional award ceremony. A quick question regarding music. Because I know there are some rules with regards to using music in public events. So do Toastmasters International have a license to use any kind of music? No, I, as far as I know, they don't have any license, but there are many pieces you can find on the internet where it's allowed to use these pieces. And you can play these. For example, if you Google for award ceremony, you will find many pieces. Now, of course, if you are, you should not take some pieces of I don't know, professional singers, pop singer, maybe you could run there into some problems because of the copyright, but yeah, you will find several pieces on the internet on YouTube. Thank you. Then one thing I can only recommend is, of course, everyone expects in, a, in, a, in an award ceremony to receive a certificate and um, everyone is, is happy, yes, of course, but you can add some, some special items to present it to the winners. For example, this can be some, some gimmicks like, for example, food for a cat or food for, for a dog, or you can also give some fruits like um, uh, 10 bananas or ananas or melons or whatever, there are so many options you have and you can, yeah, you can make everyone laugh with that. And it's, it takes only some, maybe 10 euros to, to buy that. Yeah, for example, in our last contest in the triathlon, we had some honey melon and a big watermelon for the winners. And then you can make a nice picture of them 
to, re to capture the atmosphere, everyone with the trophies, with nice trophies, you should definitely buy trophies. You have certificates and you have then a fruit, like a big honey melon, or for example, a big package of cat food. This makes a lot of fun. And if someone has no cat, it's never a problem. Maybe a neighbor has a cat or maybe someone gets then inspired to buy a cat because he has already won the cat food. And of course, making these, these pictures is also important. Be careful that you make several pictures. Sometimes everyone is happy and then after the first have already disappeared from the stage, then you think, oh my God, I should have made a picture of them. And then it's more difficult to run after them and to bring them back on stage. So it can be helpful to give this this task of making some pictures to someone else, then you don't run the risk that you forget it in the critical situation when everyone is, is happy and emotions are there. So if you find someone who can take that role, that's ideal. And trophies, trophies are important. Yes, trophies are very, very important. You can buy them on the internet. It's not so expensive. You can buy with really big, big ones with roughly 40 centimeters. And they're a set of three trophies, roughly for about 45 euros. They will, will be sent to you within three days. No problem. And these are great memories. Everyone has a big trophy, can make a picture of, of him and then put that on social media as well. So this award ceremony has a great impact because all pictures on the from the award ceremony can have uh, can capture a very nice atmosphere. And you will always see the winners, the winners will smile. It's an, an ideal moment to capture these pictures from, from the winners on stage with their trophies, their yeah, honey melons or whatever they got. There's someone here who has integrated a um, special element in the award ceremony, something else he or she would like to add. Root has raised her hand. Yeah. Yes, so maybe um, if it's a small present or something, um, especially when it's uh, not in your own city, when it's an area or division contest, it might be nice to have something local from the city or from the area. Like um, I remember in in um, oh, was it in Bremen something with a, a, a specific chocolate brand from there. Or if I think of Winnebog, we would have something with salt, of course, and that might be nice. Like a um, yeah, like a souvenir, typical for the city or the area. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And also one general proposal from my side: if you plan the award ceremony, then anticipate everything which which will happen. Visualize everything, the whole process. So what happens and what happens after that, what is the next thing, what will happen after that, then you will realize, for example, that you need dutiful pens to sign the certificates. Sometimes it can happen that certificates are printed out perfectly and then you have a strong need in a beautiful pencil, something to sign the certificates. If you visualize everything, the whole process, starting from presenting everyone, starting from calling someone on stage, up to the final pictures, the handover of the trophies, certificates and presents, then you will be, you will become very aware of what you need.
Okay, then I think our time is over. Many thanks to everyone here. Many thanks to you, Manuel, for supporting here. And then I give back to, to you, Olga and Manuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Of course, we will capture all written content we have generated so far and to give you a transcript. And we will yeah, uh, compile all, everything and write it down. And um, you have registered to this event. And I have, well, we have your email addresses. We, we, we will send you an email with the complete information about this. Yeah, So we have a handout information and transcript and Ideally, and I like to promise you this, we can publish this on the, the, the district web page. Yeah, we, I will make a sub page on the district page where we uh, publish all this information so you are well prepared for your upcoming contests. Olga, maybe you like, you like to continue? Yes, I would like to continue. Um... Yes, our time is over. Unfortunately, we of course we can speak and speak about what this contest how to organize it better. But let's say let's take two three minutes for questions. What you have right now on your heart, and then we prepared a small form for you. You see, it's our product. This is our first run of our workshop. And uh, we hope that it will be again and again. So we would like to know what we have not embraced, what you would like to have more in our workshop, and also what you think was good. So uh, if I ask Manuel, can you put the link of feedback or should I do? Um, yeah, uh, if you have it at hand, yeah, if you can post it. But please ask your questions. I At the, si at the same time, I will uh, put the link of, with the feedback. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is the district uh, allowing hybrid or online contests? No, this year, uh, this year all contests have to be in person. Yeah, okay. It's this is especially important for the area and division and district contests. But um, of course, in the clubs, you are kind of free. Yeah, nobody will control you with what you do in your clubs. We, we recommend that you do with them in person, but of course, nobody okay. can take you. Yeah. And our uh, team Spear, the club growth director, he promised that there will be an official competition online. So just keep an eye on team Spear or just uh, connect with him, ask, when and how this this competition will take place. Torsten. Uh, also, um, maybe um, as an additional question, because all, all of us, we have to start in a club contest. Um, are all these like organizational things we heard today um, have to be followed also on a club contest? So like the form to um, provide the names of the three winners or maybe, um, yeah, actually everything. Is it similar or the same for club contest, or does all what we have heard today uh, only start with the uh, with the or on the RM area level? Would you like to answer, or I? Will? Yeah, I would. I would put it like this. Yeah, on the area level, it definitely has to be like this. Yeah, on the club level, you we have to be pragmatic. Yeah. Um, Oftentimes we do not have enough judges for everything. You have not enough people who can uh, build a complete team. Yeah, you have to be uh, realistic, and uh, maybe you can find some way of making it work. And so oh, anyway, yeah, uh, it would be best, of course, if you use the complete process. And for the thing with the forms, yeah, this 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 one is really important. Um, the winners from your club contest 
fill out the form, or the contest chair will fill out the form and hand it over to the contest chair of the next level event. This one is really important. The other stuff you can, yeah. But you please don't forget you, you are in the organization where you learn and uh, the better you do your task, yeah, this is better. Just try to learn it. It, it should not be ideal. Start with mm -hmm. the documentation. Yes, it's sometimes confusing, sometimes not, you know, sometimes you don't know what to write there. But your area will appreciate if you send to the area the, the documents very well done with the membership number, with the mm -hmm. certification that, yes, this person is eligible for the contest at the area level. Just try to do it. Area directors have all the information about the members. But if the club tries to do it excellently, that is so nice. May I add a second question? Um, what if there are only maybe one or two people in uh, the same club that are interested in joining such a contest? The process stays the same, I guess? Yeah, um, think about this, yeah. Theoretically, they do not, <clears throat> they, um, also what I want to say is they should compete. Yeah, they should be give a real performance. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, you can nominate people. Yeah, they will simply go to the area without ever appearing in the club level contest. But you should not do this. Yeah, give them the training. Yeah, and but um, also think uh, about it uh, another way. So um, we have six contests. So each club can send people in every contest category. Yeah. So it's uh, food for thought. Yeah. And uh, it really, oh, sorry. <laughs> it really depends on how big your area is, how many you can send to the area contest. This is a very good point, what I wanted to mention. If an area has only four clubs or even less, then there could be two participants from each club sent to the area contest. But I also want to support Emmanuel, uh, who said that better to run contest anyhow, even if you have only one participant. Because if you, yeah, this is a, this is a good training point. The participants should feel that this is a contest. And then probably your members could give him a feedback what where he could improve. And this is very important. <laughs> yes, Verena. And I think maybe it encourages the other members of the club to join the contest next year. If they see how good it runs and how happy the participants are during this contest, Maybe they are motivated next year to join it. Yeah, so try to give them the two participants that are very, very good and, and cool contest. And I think everything will run better the following year. Okay, Dorsten, is your question again? Um, is there any limitation? So like um, if my club or our club is normally um, giving the speeches in English only, um, would the would it still be allowed to like um, organize a German speech contest? Yes. That would be very nice. That would be really great in Toastmasters. Thank you. Can oh. I say something? Yeah. Uh, I think that on club level, you, if you don't have enough participants, the club can appoint uh, contestants. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 He can go without any contest. Just nominate yeah. it. Nominate him or her. But if you want to give a proper preparation, if you want him to compete, if you want to 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 be him to be in form and uh, to feel a little bit that this is a competition, that's probably you would like to 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 train him a little bit. 
That's why we are encouraging you to still to have the contest. Yes, but if you run a contest, they cannot be disqualified because then you cannot put them forward. Yes, 